Hey everyone, this lesson we'll be focusing on molar heats of solution, so we just need to build on what we previously did. So just remember enthalpy is the amount of energy stored in a substance and delta H is how we write it down in equations. And it's delta H in the dissolution process are specific to the amount of substances uh, used. So if we change the amount of salts we put in or change the amount of water or anything like that, we need to account for that. So just make sure we remember it's not the same for everything. So in this case, we'll use molar enthalpies to avoid confusion. So molar enthalpies, uh, we're looking at enthalpy, but per mole. And this we write as delta solution of H instead of just delta H. And this, is, this always means molar heat of solution. So this is the heat absorbed when one mole of substance dissolves in a large amount of water. So the molar heat of solution for these for lithium, sodium, and potassium chloride, we can see it's exothermic because remember minus um, means it's exothermic and positive means it's endothermic. So when we dissolve these, these last two will be, uh, the solution will feel cold. Uh, if we look at these, then we see that they all become exothermic. So at the general trend for this is that the heat of solution increases down a group, uh, that is becomes more endothermic, so it becomes more positive. The greatest energy released is when the small cations with high positive charge are dissolved, and that means it's exothermic. Uh, so the greatest energy for these will be the, the top ones, and as we go down it becomes more and more positive. So aluminum ions are small and highly positive, and have high negative hydration energy. So negative means very exothermic. So in all chemical reactions we have the change of reactants into products, so that's what a chemical reaction is. We have something and then we're changing, breaking bonds, forming bonds, making new things. The heat of reactions, the enthalpy change is uh, in a chemical reaction is the heat of reaction. And this will be exothermic if the delta H is negative, remember, or endothermic if the delta H is positive. So for example, combustion, we know combustion uh, is like burning something, so always it's uh, exothermic reactions. So we looked at previously uh, the combustion of methane, CH4, with oxygen produces carbon dioxide and water. And because it's combustion, the delta H value is negative, so negative 80, 890 kilojoules. So combustion is exothermic, it's always exothermic, and one mole of methane will release, release 890 kilojoules of energy. So hydrocarbons release a lot of energy when it's burnt, and that's why we use them as fuels. And when we this energy is always in the form of heat as well as a bit of light. Acid-base neutralization, so we put an acid, so hydrochloric acid here, with a base, uh, sodium hydroxide, and we form a salt and water. The delta H value is minus 57 kilojoules, so it's minus, meaning it's exothermic, and usually neutralizations tend to be exothermic reactions. When we have one mole of hydrogen chloride, and we uh, neutralize it with sodium hydroxide, we get 57 kilojoules of heat energy because it's minus, it's releasing it, and these are all in moles. So then sodium and the chloride are, remember, spectator ions. They don't participate in the chemical reaction itself. They just sit around in the aqueous solution. And when we look at them, uh, a, a series of different uh, acid-base neutralizations, we can see that they're all almost the same because these all have one mole of uh, acid and one mole of a base when we react them together. So we all, for each mole we will get 57.1 kilojoules of energy released. However, if you notice these two are slightly different, uh, it's because we're, when we look at the chemical reaction there is a slightly different stoichiometry, which we'll go through. So what's really happening in an acid-base neutralization reaction is that the protons from the uh, acid are reacting with the hydroxide ions from their base and forming water. And remember we had them as salts, so the like sodium or chloride uh, spectator ions, so we haven't included them in this reaction. So remember we said it was 57.1 kilojoules of energy released. Released is exothermic, exothermic is negative. 
So what we have here is hydrogen sulfide reacting with uh, sodium hydroxide. But for every uh, hyd uh, acid here, we have two hydrogens, and therefore we will need two sets of the base to um, neutralize it, to get two sets of water and a salt. So here is double the amount of energy needed because we have two moles required now to neutralize the acid. So the first, first four reactions we said was 57.1 kilojoules released. And this occurs, uh, this is the same reaction in all of them because the spectators uh, ions are not involved. So what really happens is this equation in all four of them. And that's why we have the same H, delta H values. But we need two moles of sodium hydroxide to neutralize one mole of hydrogen sulfate. So that means we need double the H value to in this equation. So we have to make sure we account for two sets of moles here. And that's why we double this one here. So just to summarize, we're just looking at different forms of reactions, so combustion and neutralization. And generally, neutralization reactions are exothermic. That means they release the amount of energy, and combustion is always exothermic. So in acid-based neutralization, we just need to make sure we also take into account the stoichiometry in the equation. So how many moles of each thing are required in the reaction, and then therefore we can determine the amount of um, changes in enthalpy accordingly. So with that, we should answer some questions. Firstly, question six, what is enthalpy? Is it the temperature of the substance? Uh, it's not because this depends on the environment and all sorts of other factors. Is it the temperature of the water? Um, the temperature of the water depends on how hot the room is, so it's also not enthalpy. And is it the change in temperature when you heat water? Uh, this is the amount of energy you need to increase the uh, amount, the temperature of the water, so it's not enthalpy. Enthalpy is the amount of energy stored in the substance, and so therefore D is correct. Question 7, what does the delta solution H uh, symbol stand for? Is it A, the temperature of the solution? No, the delta means a change in something, but it's not, uh, it's not in this case. Is the temperature of the substance? Well, it's not there's no change in temperature of the substance, so therefore uh, it's, it's not this one because delta means change in. So is it a change in temperature of the solution? This is partly correct, but we need a bit more information. So it's the change in temperature of the solution when one mole of the substance is dissolved in water. Remember that we defined this earlier in the lesson, and we were saying that delta H is the change in temperature of the solution, uh, but delta solution H meant it included the moles, so you, let, you were telling us how much is involved in the reaction. So D is correct. A, why do we need to specify the term delta solution H as molar heat of solution? The change in enthalpy is dependent on the amount of substances you dissolve. So remember we were looking at the acid base neutralization because there was, uh, in HCl, you only had one to one ratio, so therefore you had minus 57. But if you had uh, the ones that required two sets of base, then you had to change the delta H accordingly. So if we dissolve five grams of a substance X, the change of enthalpy will be less than 10 grams of the substance X in the same amount of water because we're doubling the amount of things we're dissolving. So we must therefore have a standard, and in chemistry our standard is the mole, and therefore we need to we specify that this uh, delta H sol solution uh, of the molar, molar heat of solution is including the moles. So question nine, describe the difference in molar heat of solution for exo and endothermic reactions. In an exothermic reaction, it's one that's releasing heat, and therefore the energy required to break bonds is less than that to form bonds. And this reaction releases heat, so it's, it's a negative number. So the delta H is negative. Endothermic reactions, the heat energy to break the bonds is more than that to form bonds, so therefore we get uh, absorption of heat, and therefore the delta H must be positive. Finally, question 10, describe the trend of molar heats of solution for ionic chlorides in a group. So the heat of solution becomes more positive 
so less negative as you go down a group. So that means it's becoming more and more um, positive. More and more positive means more and more endothermic. So just to summarize what we did, we're looking at different types of reactions. So combustion, combustion is always an exothermic reaction and acid uh, base neutralization, which is generally, so in most cases, it's an exothermic reaction as well. Therefore, exothermic reactions produce a uh, release heat into the uh, surroundings, and therefore, the delta H is negative in this case. Mm -hmm.